For this video we're going to have a look at drawing a slider crank mechanism and we're going to go and find the locus of a point on that mechanism at point P over there. To start off with our drawing we have to always go and draw the given out first and we're going to include all of the horizontal and vertical center lines. So to start off our drawing we're going to go and draw line AB first and we can see that that line is given at a 60 degree angle. So we're going to take from the starting point, we're going to go and draw out line AB. I'm just going to do it in construction and then with my compass I'm going to mark off 32 millimeters on that line and then draw in a dark line which represents line AB at a 60 degree angle. And I'm also going to label it the way that they have. Okay, and give us line AB. And then we've got line BC over here, which is connected to the bottom of a circle over here. So we, to get there, we're quickly first going to go and draw in the center lines that they've given us. Okay, a vertical center line. And then also they have a horizontal center line. And then as we can clearly see, they've got a circle in there. So, which goes around point B. So, with our compass still on that 32 millimeters, we're going to go and draw in that circle. Okay, hopefully, while you do it, you don't let your compass slide. Make sure that you hold on nice and tight to your compass. Okay, and around that point A, we're going to go and draw in the circle that they've given to us there. And then, as you can see here at the question, Point C over there is connected to, or at least it's in line with point D, which is on our circle. So we're going to, let's just mark that as point D the same way they have. And then we're simply going to go and draw a nice center line the way that they did off of the bottom of that circle. And there we've got it over there. They've called that line E. So let's just mark that. That's line E. And then we're going to go and draw in line BC. And they've told us there that line BC is 125 millimeters long. So I'm going to take my compass, place my compass on 125 millimeters. And then place my compass onto point B. And then simply make an arc on line E. That then shows me where point C will be. And I can simply go and join up line B to line C, sorry, point B to point C. I'm going to mark that as being C. And I think we now have, well, not everything that they've given to us. We still need to go and put in point P. And they've told us here that BP is 75 millimeters. So from point B over there, we measure 75 millimeters in. That then gives us the position of point P. Okay, so that completes the given. Now what we're going to do is we they want us to go and find the locus of point P as this mechanism turns one full revolution, 360 degrees. So we know that point A over there is a fixed point which would normally be attached to a motor which would get our mechanism moving. So if point A is fixed that means that point B over there can only move in a circle around point A. So that's what that circle is there for. That's to show us the path of point B. And we're going to start this construction by dividing that pathway into 12 equal parts. Whenever we're trying to find the locus of a point, we want to use 12 equal parts. We don't want to use anything less because otherwise the locus of the point that we're trying to find will be too inaccurate. So we're going to just use our 50 and 60 degree set square for this breakup. We're going to use our 50 and 60 degree set square to go and neatly break up our circle into 12 equal parts. And that then allows us to be able to draw in 12 positions of line or arm AB. So as our mechanism moves clockwise, that line AB over there will move to that position, then it's going to move to that position, then to that one, and slowly but surely it will move all the way around until it gets back to the original position that we've got. So our first step there, we're going to go and just go and label each of the different positions that B can be in according to our breakup. So that would be B1, then it can move to B2, and as it moves around, we're going to mark all of those positions, and we're going to label them.
All 12 of them. Okay, so that would be 12 parts because we started with 0 there for B and then we've counted all the way down to 11. And that then shows us all of the different positions of arm AB as that moves around in one full circle. Now what we're going to do is we know that line BC or arm BC is connected at point B. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and redraw every new position for arm BC as this arm AB moves around. And we know that the length of BC can't change because it's a metal rod. So we're going to leave our compass on the length of line BC. And as point B moves around, we're simply going to make an arc onto line E and then label it according to, line, according to point B. So if that was C, this is C1, which then matches B1. Then we move across to B2 and do the same thing. Mark it off and say that that's C2, which matches B2. And we keep on doing this all the way around. I'm going to do two at a time. That's C3, C4. C5 is pretty close to C4. And C7 is pretty close to C2, and that's fine. That's C9, there's C10, and then of course our last one, which is C11. And then of course we get back to B, so that gets us back to the starting point of C. Okay, now we've got all of those marked off. Now we're going to go and draw in construction all of the different arms BC. So all we have to do is make sure that we follow our labeling. So B1 to C1, B2 to C2, and so on and so on. And we've got to go and draw in all of those lines. It does take a bit of time. But this is making sure that we have 12 points or 12 different positions of point P to be able to get an accurate locus of point P. Now, of course, B7 over there is already drawn in for us. It's our straight line. So we can go straight through to B8. And then on to B9. And we've got two more to go. There's B10. And then last but not least, our B11. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got all of our positions of arm BC as AB moved around. Okay, now we've got that done. Now all we've got left to do, because we're looking for the locus of point P over there, we're going to take our compass and we're going to put our compass onto the length of line BP. Because, of course, that length can't change because, of course, it's a point on a metal rod and that can't change length at all. So we're going to put our compass onto that length and then simply move with arm AB to our new position of point B and then mark off on arm BC where point P would have moved to and then we're going to mark that point P as P1. Then we're going to go to B2 and do the same thing and mark off onto line B. C and mark that then as P2. And so we keep going around marking off all the new positions of point P on each of the lines that we've drawn for BC. That's P4. And we're going to keep going around. I suggest that you mark each new one as you go, otherwise, you can very easily lose track, especially when it gets messy like over here to be able to actually keep track of the lines i do suggest that you mark each one as you go around as i'm doing otherwise it's very easy to get lost in all of the lines that you've got we're on p8 then on to p9 
then on to P10. And last but not least, P11. Now remember please that when you do this, don't go and draw these little dots that I'm drawing. That's just so that you can clearly see on the video exactly where I'm going. And then, of course, once we've done all of that, we now need to join all of those point P's with the French curve to be able to get the arc or the locus of point P, which is what we were trying to find all along. And of course, it is a little bit tricky using a French curve to do this, but try and get as smooth an arc as what you possibly can for all your point P's. When it gets close to here now, it's not as easy to be able to get a nice smooth arc. We want to try and get it as smooth as possible as we go around. And once we've been able to join all of those point P's together, we then will have the locus that we were looking for of point P. Okay, we just got the last couple to join. Okay, and then that last one over there. Okay, so that then shows us using our French curve exactly what the locus of point P is going to be. And that's now our question complete.